So we're in the native instrument suite here at ADE and we have the Tractor Control S2 here. Now we've had time to have a really good play on this controller. I'm going to talk to you in the next few minutes about who it's for, uh, who, what, it, what it does, what it doesn't do, uh, and you can make a decision by the end of this whether it's the controller for you out of the new Tractor gear. We've already had a look at the S4 a few weeks ago of course, so we'll link to that video as well here. Okay, so the S2 is a really interesting controller, especially for native instruments, because it's going right for the price point at the bottom that so many people are spending their money on when they start DJing. We're looking at the same kind of place as the Pioneer DDJ SB3 and the Pioneer DDJ400, and of course the Mixed Track series. So these are perfectly capable controllers, but that are stripped back and that do enough to get you going. The kind of controller that you will probably keep once you go professional and upgrade to something a bit bigger as your second controller. So what's interesting about this one is what they've taken off as much as what they've left in. So when I talk you through the features, I'll show you the things that you're not getting from a bigger controller. And it's a very thoughtfully designed controller. I like to think of this having played with it for a bit as minimal rather than stripped back or simple. So let's go through the controls first. The mixer section has got a pretty standard crossfader. There's nothing unusual there. It certainly wouldn't please a scratch DJ, but it's fine for the kind of DJing that you're likely to be doing on a device like this. As you would expect, the up fader is a bit stiffer than the cross fader. It has a twin VU meter in the middle, which will let you check the gain controls on each track. So my gain control is being shown here, which allows me to set it so that it's not clipping per track, which is nice. Some controllers will only give you a master VU output there. So you have that control on each deck. Speaking of the decks, there are two main decks, but it has got access to decks three and four in tracks, which I'll talk to you about in a second. So the rest of the mixer, the gain controls I've already shown you at the top, one per channel, and then there is high, mid, and low EQ here. Now these are fully kill EQs. And I'm going to guess that's adjustable inside the preferences as it always has been in Tractor. So you can set the EQ to what you want if that's not your flavour. There is a filter here. Again, this is going to be configurable. But what is nice on this device is they've taken a leaf out of the Pro DJ Gearbook and given you a set of sweep effects here, not just. the filter, so there are four effects here that you can choose from. You hear this is an echo combined with a filter. So these are kind of like on mode at the moment. These are macro effects where the, thought, the thinking's been done for you and you're getting just a one knob effect that sounds really, really good. It's very, very different to the way that controllers have traditionally done effects and certainly at this price point and at this level, it's quite a clever move. You certainly see pro DJs using very little other than that one knob on the highest end DJ gear. So um, it's a bold decision to have only that as the effects on this controller because at the top of the jog wheels, there is a notable absence of the standard kind of three knob plus, uh, plus control knob and all the buttons, which most DJ controllers until this point have had and which the S4 has. But it's worth pointing out that this is something that you are not seeing on a lot of other controllers and pro gear as well. It's all down here on the macros. Okay, so there's a little bit about the effects. Let's talk through what's going on on the decks. Now, the first thing to note is the decks are not mirror image. They are identical. So this is again, a leaf out of Pro DJ gear, but you don't see the tempo fader suddenly appearing on the other side to the other deck on any Pro gear, of course, because they're all separates. So these are looking exactly the same as each other. And the line down the middle here kind of like accentuates the fact that what we have here two decks and a mixer, right? Just shrunk down into the uh, lightweight but pretty sturdy box. By the way, I always do the diagonal twist test on any gear just to see if it creaks and this doesn't. It's nicely made. Right, now down at the bottom are the performance pads. These are RGB. They're only using some of the lights in our, um, in our review. We haven't found the red, but I'm guessing that they could do that uh, if, uh, if there was a function that used it. These are your four pads. They've got a nice click on them. Uh, and they're made of rubber. All the other buttons are plastic, but they're, they're fine. And the, the, the knobs, are, again, are, uh, they feel high quality. They're plastic, but they feel good. Uh, so these are rubber, uh, rubberized pads. What we're missing here, again, is all these kind of buttons that give you all kind of functions, like slices and loop rolls and all this kind of stuff. They've stripped the pads back to very simple controls, namely hot cue and samples. Now, I'm going to talk you through the samples in a minute, but the hot cues do exactly what you think they're going to do. They let you just drop cues onto the track and then flip back to them. 
But the samples are an interesting way of adding on two extra decks without the, again, the complexity of having layer buttons uh, and similar in order to access your decks. So what happens in this controller is that decks three and four are exclusively for your samples. And the way the samples are handled in Tractor is with remix decks. Now, remix decks are frightfully complicated. Uh, even the very best DJs in the world have struggled on their off days to understand them. So it's quite good to see the way that the implementation here, anyone could do. Samples will give you four slots, and the four slots control four remix decks inside the software. So you can have four samples, imagining that you are, for instance, a um, mobile DJ and you've got your jingles or your idents here, or you just simply have one shots that you want to access. You hit samples, there is a sample volume at the top here, and by pressing these buttons uh, and muting and unmuting them here, you've got your four samples that you can play through. Uh, feel, 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 feel. Now, it was completely coincidental that that said the word fill. I'm just going to point this out right now. Uh, okay, so there's your sample slots. Very easy to use. You've got one on each side. It gives you access to decks three and four without the complexity. So, another thing that Tract has always been good at is the looping. So, looping here is controlled by the loop controller here. Press it on and off, and then double and half. But you also have a loop move, which is really nice. It moves the currently set loop and moves you with it. Now you can also set the loop to move ahead of where you are in the track and then when the track reaches it, it will just loop from that point, which is really nice. And this stuff saved with the track as well. Okay, so there's the looping and sampling and the way the pads are used. Again, it's quite minimal. It's only the stuff that tends to be used most. Let's move over to the way this bit works. We've got uh, our usual pitch control here. Now the pitch control, although it's small, taking it out of the way of where it would normally be up here by these oversized jog wheels. We'll talk about the jog wheels in a minute. It actually is adjusting even at plus minus 20. If we can look at the screen, we can see it's adjusting at um, a hundredth of a BPM. So that is an extremely nice control for the size of it. To adjust by a hundredth of a BPM is really quite impressive. The key lock is here, which will stop the track's pitch moving up and down as we're moving. And the key lock algorithm has been massively improved in Tractor Pro 3. This has got a really nice sound to it, even when we're at quite a long way away from the original pitch. There's a sync button here as well. And by pressing shift and sync, we can lock the pitch. So if you're using sync entirely in your DJ sets, that's the only way you pitch your tracks to each other, then by pressing shift and sync, you can just lock these out so that you don't accidentally touch them and move the BPM of your track. Nicely implemented, again, it's minimal rather than simple, which I really like. It's a, it's a feature of this controller of pretty much everything they've done. They've kind of stripped away what you don't need and left what you do. Speaking about stuff that you do need nowadays, Flux or Slip Mode as it's called on other brands, uh, is an interesting control because this lets you do any old thing with your decks uh, and it will jump, jump back to where you were playing uh, before you'd done that. So by turning on uh, Flux Mode, we can and it's jumping back to where it would have been before I larged it up on the uh, jog wheels. Uh, and you have a reverse mode as well, which actually is not reverse, it's just a uh, sensor. So that will automatically kick in the flux, whether the flux is on or off. Although you can have a true reverse mode by pressing flux while you've got your hand on reverse, and there you go, you've got a true reverse. So let's go to the jog wheels. The jog wheels are really nice for a controller this size. They are oversized. Uh, they look a little bit too big for the device, which is awesome. That's exactly what you want. As I said, the tempo control has been moved out of the way to allow that to happen. There's none of the haptic feedback or the motor that you've got on the Tractor Control S4. And there's no flashing lights around them or anything, which is cool. Again, they've stripped away the stuff that would have added expense to this device with no real reason. Uh, but they feel really good. They're nice, they're solid. There is none of that. What I always test on jog wheels is when you hold them like this, have you got any movement? And there is no movement at all. There's no noise, there's no give. They are, they're really solid. Uh, and they're nicely indented as well, which kind of makes them look even bigger with this shiny section around here. So the jog wheels are done really nicely. Okay, so we've covered the mixer and we've covered the decks. Now let's move on to how you select your tracks. And again, the way this is done is really nice. So we have a button here, which will take you to and from your library. So the library is shown on screen. Uh, and then you can move up and down through the tracks here click will load the track, nothing unusual there. Uh, but there is a nice button here which lets you add things to your favorites. So by moving up and down, I can select the tracks that I might want to play uh, and put them into my favorites there. Now, if you want to have a look at what's going on, you hold down shift and you then turn the 
browse button to go to your favorites or to anything else in the tree on the software and that will select a different folder for you to be looking from. In the preferences you can choose whether when you hold shift and turn this knob you look through the tree or you look through your favorites which are at the top of the library. Again it's a nice little thing to have uh, in the preferences if you never do anything other than DJ from the folders that you favorited. So that's how Browse works. Middle of the mixer here is the kind of output controls. We've got the volume control for the headphones. We've got the headphone mix. The sampler control I've already showed you. This controls the volume of decks three and four, which is exclusively for samples on this device. Uh, and the master uh, output here. To the left, we have quantize. And if you hold down shift, you get snap. So for you tractor um, long time users, that's where those functions are. And there's a microphone on off here. OK, let's look at the front of the device. Not much to show you around here. Simple eighth inch in out. Very few headphones don't have the eighth inch plug uh, with a screw in adapter for the, the bigger one nowadays. So they've done away with any quarter inch there. And around the back of the unit, a few mysterious things here. So we'll get a bit of intrigue in before the end. There is a input for a power supply here, although this is using USB from the computer just fine. However, were you to plug an iOS device into the iOS socket and you wanted to charge it, you would definitely need this. So there's definitely some thinking going on for iOS here. There is a RCA output, no booth output, no extra outputs, just unbalanced RCAs there. And the microphone plugs in here with its own volume control here. So that's why there's only a microphone on off on the top. Everything else happens around the back. Kensington lock and two interesting screws here. Now a little metal stand there would hold an iPad very nicely at the back of this unit, wouldn't it? So let's speculate about what that might mean. We're going to have a separate demo of Traktor Pro 3 because there's a lot of changes in Traktor that it's not worth telling you about at this point because I've told, I've told you how this interface is with Traktor and the way it does it is quite elegant and quite simple so you don't need to worry about the complex, complexities of Traktor until you're ready if you buy this controller. Overall, it is the kind of controller you will keep forever. You will probably upgrade to a better tractor controller or system as you develop in your DJing, but it's certainly not the kind of controller that you'll be embarrassed you ever bought. It's beautifully made for the price of 229. You're getting the full tractor version and an extremely professional feeling, but minimal controller. I think they've done a really good job because what they're doing is covering the lower ground rather than having everything somewhere in the middle. And then you can move up to the tractor control S4 Mark III when you're ready. Uh, we think it's a great device. It ought to do well for Native. It's going to have to do well for them because there's been no movement at all for years in this area. So best of luck to them with this. Um, if you're interested, you can read more on the website where we've written up the full review. We'll be having demos and lots of other stuff with this. So keep your eye out for it. And remember, we have Tractor Made Easy if you want to really get under the skin of your tractor controller and software. Go check it out on our courses page. Like, follow, share if you've enjoyed this. And we'll see you again very soon. Get good. Get out there. Make the moments.